Well, hello to those who are just joining us. Um, we're going to take a few minutes here to allow all the members who've registered it, uh, registered to join. And while we wait here, I just want to remind everyone to um, submit some questions if you have them via the chat. We're always uh, open to answering them at the end. Um, love to hear from you. All right, I think we can go ahead and get started. So hello and welcome to another installment of our Wireside Chat produced by CTI Connect. I'm Joey DeGraba, Product Manager at CTI. And today I'd like to welcome Blair Clements, the VP of Sales and Marketing for Innovative Circuit Technology, more commonly known as ICT. ICT is well known for its intelligent DC power distribution and power conversion products. And we'll be discussing various topics surrounding the evolution of wireless networks and tower site infrastructure, as well as the benefits of dedicated DC power plants and how ICT is helping improve the quality of service surrounding this very essential element of power. So it's nice to have you, Blair. And Thanks, uh, you go ahead and introduce yourself to our listeners. Sure. Um, again, Blair Clements, uh, VP of Sales and Marketing with ICT. I've been with ICT for about 12 years now. Uh, prior to that, I was with a company called Xantrex Technology, which was also a power conversion company. Um, and my background is in uh, electrical and electronic engineering is what I studied, but most of my professional career, I've been in sort of the sales area. So um, just a little touch on ICT for those that you don't know us. Uh, we've been in business since uh, 1986. Um, in the beginning, uh, we were primarily focused on the land mobile radio uh, market. Uh, it's very similar to the fixed wireless access market. It's uh, tower sites, uh, backup power for those types of sites, anywhere where two-way radio communications are required by customers. Um, and one element of the, uh, the uh, land mobile radio market is the, the need for critical power infrastructure because a lot of it is used for public safety. So you can think about police, fire, ambulance, and those types of services relying on their communication networks to uh, respond to disasters, earthquakes, hurricanes, whatever it may be. So critical power infrastructure is something we've been doing since 1986. And about 10 years ago, we kind of moved also into the fixed wireless market because there's a lot of synergies and parallels to the actual application itself. Um, you know, tower site power, backup batteries, that type of thing. So the only real difference being the voltage that's required by some of these devices is primarily 48 versus 12 in the LMR segment. So it was a natural progression for us to move into that space with the experience we, we brought with uh, the LAM over radio networks and fixed wireless access is obviously rapidly growing as everyone knows. So we're participating in that as well. So I'd like to start with um, the evolution of the, the WISP over the last decade. You know, we're seeing um, small companies become large organizations and this growth seems to, to parallel the ever increasing demand for, for broadband services, which as we know over the last two years or so was accelerated you know, during the pandemic. And broadband at this point has now become a utility. Uh, so from ICT's perspective, how is power equipment sort of evolving uh, uh, today? Yeah, yeah, we've seen that change uh, a lot. Like I said, we got into this space about 10 or so years ago. Um, and back then, you know, there were a lot of smaller operators, um, very small. And, and the changes that we've seen uh, with those operators, just with their organic growth and how they've expanded their businesses, um, as well as, you know, growth by acquisition of some of the larger WISP coming in and, 
and buying some of the uh, the smaller ones. You know, it's it's been a remarkable journey in such a short space of time that the evolution of this space um, is quite inspiring. There's a lot of entrepreneurial uh, spirit within this type of uh, segment. Um, so yeah, it's, it, we've noticed a lot of changes in the beginning. With a lot of the smaller WISP, there wasn't as much emphasis placed on having a dedicated DC power plant for their sites. Um, and, you know, with a smaller um, client base, you know, and, and maybe less uh, subscribers, the, the need for that maybe is less prevalent. But as these organizations have grown and as there's more subscribers, um, and as you mentioned, Joey, the, the need for broadband is almost like a utility service now. So the customer expectations over the last 10 years have changed dramatically too. So um, it's not just a matter of, of losing your internet for your sort of personal reasons that you may be using it for, but a lot of people are working from home and a lot of people have remote medicine or remote healthcare or remote education. So the need for broadband has approached that almost utility sort of uh, level and it's like electricity and water almost. So, and that's changed the approach that a lot of our customers have taken when it comes to um, using DC dedicated DC power plants to power up their tower sites. Um, because, you know, as that grows and the expectations grow, um, it's very important that, uh, you know, the power side of things is able to maintain network uh, availability. Um, you know, the, the network is only as strong as the power that's provided to it. So having a dedicated DC power plant helps to sort of mitigate any potential power issues that customers see. So we've seen that change where, you know, in the beginning 10 years ago, a lot of people weren't as familiar with uh, or utilizing a DC power plant, whereas a lot of our customers now are recognizing the value that, that can bring and, and provides, you know, better network reliability, more network uptime and, and, and better customer satisfaction ultimately. So um, that's that's been growing a lot and continues to do so uh, as we expand and as government funding comes into it a lot as well and customers are, are expanding rapidly. Yep. And that's that's a good segue into into sort of what's been going on with the FCC because we've seen, you know, the organic growth, but then more recent government funding programs have increased, you know, the definition of what is broadband. So from say the 25 by three to 5010, or we're seeing 100 by 20 in some cases and, and even higher. So this is causing operators, I think, to look at um, the technologies that they deploy to support these higher speed requirements. And so how does ICT's products help operators with this sort of transition that we're seeing? Yeah, we're noticing it a lot. Um, you know, I'm sure many in the audience are fully aware of the federal programs such as the Connect America Fund and the Rural Digital Opportunity Fund. And particularly when it comes to the benchmark definition for broadband, that is that is changing. You know, the traditional was 25 megabits down and three up. And, um, you know, a lot of application use uh, for broadband these days, those, those types of speeds um, aren't as sufficient. You know, when there's a lot of streaming services and that is about as, as much as it got. A lot of emphasis was on the download, but now with remote healthcare and there's a lot of exchange of data and information going back and forward. So, you know, the, the upload uh, bandwidth is also uh, very important as well. So that definition has changed and particularly with the Rural Digital Opportunity Fund, um, a lot of the requirements in terms of uh, receiving federal funding was putting this sort of higher benchmark when it comes to um, you know, broadband speeds. Um, but, you know, what we are seeing also is, you know, the fixed wireless access can serve a lot of those requirements. Um, you know, it's still a relevant, and very cost-effective way to deploy broadband. It's a viable technology um, for broadband, and I think it will continue to be so uh, for the foreseeable future. And what a lot of these radio manufacturers are obviously keeping up and making sure that their products are, are able to grow in terms of the amount of speed they're able to provide, the propagation distance and things like that. So what tends to happen as it relates to our products, um, as those speed requirements are higher, um, the, the power required by a lot of those radios is increasing as well. Um, so. So that's where the ICT products come in. We're able to provide power that traditionally may have been done over a POE, for example, and now we're sort of needing that higher power levels 
that POE won't serve. And so a dedicated DC power plant is, is useful for those types of things. And the very nature of our products is that they're scalable. So as your power requirements change, that could be adding more subscribers to a tower, for example, and adding more radios to a tower. Um, as those change, um, mm. we can scale up to meet those types of requirements. And as the technology changes to meet, you know, today's broadband definition or potential future broadband definitions as set by the FCC, um, we can scale up to meet you know, the power requirements of today's new radios and future radios that may require more power to get to those types of speed levels. So um, it's definitely driving a technology shift and uh, it's happening within the industry and a lot of the OEMs I'm sure are, are working very hard to come out with the next greatest radio to support these types of speeds in a, in a, in a wireless manner. So um, we stand ready to sort of scale up to meet those requirements when it comes to power levels that some of those new products will need. Yep. Yeah, so um, let's talk about the benefits of the dedicated DC power plant. Um, you know, going the route of using the manufacturer's standalone um, power supply is just, it, it's simple and it's inexp uh, inexpensive, but it has, um, it has downsides and it's got pain points. So fill us in on what operators should be thinking about um, with your products. Sure. Um, you know, what we see, uh, we used to see a lot of it in the past when this industry was sort of, you know, forming and, and you know, 10 or more years ago, but, um, and we still see it to some degree today. There's, you know, a lot of the uh, OEM providers of some of the RF equipment that's going on the tower is, uh, you know, provides their own sort of power source and way to get power to their device. And um, traditionally what we've seen in the past where, you know, custom, uh, you know, the wireless internet service providers were utilizing the sort of the OEM power supply that came along with the particular radio device. So, and that's a, that's a fair way to build your site and, and there's nothing wrong with that, so to speak, you've got power to your site, but it's, what we're finding now is having a dedicated power plant that, driven primarily by you know customer demand and expectations for their for their radio so having a dedicated power plant that can tie into the backup battery systems at a site or any other secondary source of power uh, enables you to make sure that you're not exposing yourself to potentially loss of power to a device or several devices at your tower site so um it's something that's been been happening a lot in the telecom space. If you look at sort of the carriers, for example, the tier one, tier two carriers, you know, like the, you know, the AT&Ts and Verizon, et cetera, you know, when they build their sites, there's a lot of dedicated power plants behind those sites because they realize, you know, when the power's out, you can't afford to lose cell phone communications. It's just almost a critical uh, communications infrastructure. So, and as I mentioned earlier, when we look at the land mobile radio space for critical applications like public safety, which ICT also participates in, please fire an ambulance, you know, when a, a major disaster hits, that's when they need those types of communication networks the most to be able to facilitate a coordinated response using their communications network. So we're very familiar with having critical power to power those sites. And I think the expectation from customers in terms of broadband availability to their home is growing rapidly because they're not just using it necessarily for recreational purposes. As I mentioned, you know, they're using it for healthcare and education and remote, remote working from home, which has been exasperated by the, the, the pandemic and, and COVID. So I think a lot of WISs are realizing this and, and a lot of customers are placing that expectations on them for network uptime and availability and having a dedicated power plant as well as you know, good quality you know, devices on the tower. Um, the power plant is a big portion of that because uh, you know without power to your site and reliable power to your site, you know all those you know devices on the tower are not going to operate. So going away from sort of the traditional plug every device into you know each thing can then create a single point of failure with an maybe an AC UPS system that customers may be using, for example. So. With a dedicated power plant, we can take that AC power, we can provide power to all the devices on the tower, we're able to charge the batteries, um, a lot of the sites have backup batteries, so we're able to charge those batteries, so when you do lose AC power at a particular site, those batteries power is automatically fed through the ICT equipment to your load devices without any switchover, so as far as your site is concerned, you haven't lost any power 
Uh, and then when that power comes back online, we have a dedicated charging circuit, which can recharge your batteries and keep those devices running. So it's somewhat of a seamless uh, issue if, if you do lose power out of sight. And with the scalability, you're able to scale your battery banks to, depending on how much backup time you do need. Um, so, and that can vary on site to site. So if your site is remotely located and it's gonna take you a while to get there, perhaps you want eight, 12, 24 hours of battery backup time. If it's somewhat local, maybe you only need two hours. So that can all be adjusted based on what the actual needs are for the particular tower sites. And then where we come into play is we do have the, you know, the ability to remotely monitor the power conditions at the site. So, so that's you know, important to understanding what your battery voltage is and, and, uh, and how much runtime and battery backup time you have remaining on your site. Do you need to send a technician or someone out to the site to you know, resolve the issue? Or uh, do you have enough backup time based on the utility power coming back in, a, in a, um, you know, a, an hour or so? so so it just it provides your network with less downtime generally uh, because there is that backup DC power system in place for your devices. Um, and then we also have systems that, that sort of vary when it comes to uh, features and benefits, so to speak. So we, we have a, a you know, we, we like to approach it with a, a good, better, best scenario where depending on the site, uh, if it's a smaller site with not many subscribers, there's maybe no need to have the, top of the line with all the bells and whistles and features, um, it's maybe not the most cost-effective solution. So when we're working with customers, uh, we work very close with them to understand what their needs are and pre present the best solution for that. So, you know, the dedicated power plant, uh, one example of the benefits of it is we have what we call M plus one redundancy. So for critical sites, uh, we have a modular system where you can actually scale up the number of power modules you need. So if your particular site needed, for example, 600 watts of power, we have a 700 watt power module, and then we add an extra one in there for safe, you know, for peace of mind. So if any one of those power modules goes offline, you've still got enough power, your site does not go down. And then you can go out to the site when you can, pull out that power module, replace it with another one without shutting down your site. So redundancy should anything go wrong with one of the power modules it doesn't happen often but it can happen on occasion because it is a power device so um, so we have that kind of redundant system built into our platforms as well to provide that peace of mind to customers to say I've got a lot of subscribers on this this particular tower site is very critical to my network operation I really can't afford to lose power to this this tower site so we have the redundant systems to be able to do that. And, uh, and again, we tie in with the battery backup system to provide eight, 12, 24 hours, two hours of battery backup time for those sites as well. So the nice thing about uh, utilizing a dedicated DC power plant is we do have the ability to have uh, remote monitoring control capabilities with those sites as well. So that's important. And, and we design our products based on customer feedback. You know, what are, you, what are the issues you have with your sites today and, and how can we design products to help get around and resolve those issues for you? And, and one of the biggest things we got when we talked to people in the space, fixed wireless space, but also in the land over radio space is some of my sites are remotely located. And sometimes one of my devices goes down and I have to send somebody out there. And quite often I go in and it's just a, it's locked up and I just have to toggle power to that one device. But I've spent two hours driving to the site and then two hours driving back. And meanwhile, you know, a part or a portion of my network was down while that was occurring. So having the remote control and monitoring aspect really helps to give you full visibility of what's going on at your site, but also to take steps to correct any issues that may be there. So on the monitoring side, you can know what your battery state of charge is. You know how much runtime you have left remaining on your batteries. Um, and so that's important if you know the utility power's out, but your utility is telling you the power should be back in two hours. Well, I've got eight hours back up on my battery. I don't have to send anybody. I'm going to be okay. So not having that visibility, you're kind of making a little bit of guesswork. You're not sure how long your, your site may be running for. So to provide that kind of feedback is really key as well. You can also see that the power being drawn by individual devices, see if there's any issues with any of those devices. Um, we also have built-in security aspects and environmental monitoring as, that's tied into our products as well. So 
if you have a remote site and someone opens up the the door to that shelter or the door to your equipment ca cabinet, we can send you an email notification to say the door has been opened or the smoke detector has gone off or there is a, a the, the flood detector or the water detector has gone off. So you've maybe got an issue with your site from an environmental standpoint as well. So just knowing everything that's going on from a power and an environmental standpoint is really a powerful tool that a lot of our customers are really, really see the benefits of. Um, and then we can also log data. So you can a data log out and you can see when you lost ac power when it came back what your battery voltage was down to and, and those types of things um, so that's very important on the monitoring side but on the control side this is where ict really differentiated itself I and mean, we were the first ones to come out with a kind of power platform products in this space that can enable you to not just monitor but actually make some changes and control your units remotely and so for example if one of your devices is locked up and not operational and before you were sending someone out to that site to toggle power to it, now you can just log into our graphical user interface on your uh, on any web-based browser, on a tablet or a desktop or your phone even, and you can see the device you need to toggle power to and just do that remotely. So there's you know instances instead of it taking two to four hours to resolve that you may be able to resolve it in five minutes. And that results in obviously, you know, better network uptime, better quality service for your customers and subscribers hanging off your networks as well. And, um, you know, the, the investment cost is, is relatively small in terms of the payoff of not having to spend a lot of extra time sending people out to sites and operational expenses as a result of that. Um, we also have the ability to remotely do things for you. So you can sort of pre-program these types of things in. So if you're running on backup battery power and your, your voltage is depleting, um, you may opt to disconnect non-critical load devices on your tower uh, to keep your batteries running for longer. And so that can all be programmed into the ICT equipment uh, and it will automatically, when a battery gets to a certain voltage, disconnect certain load devices that are not critical to network operations uh, and keep those critical devices running for longer. Um, and we also have uh, and a nice ability, and this is customer feedback that provided this for us, is, you know, the ability to remotely monitor and control the devices relies on, a, you know, a communication to that site and a link to that site. Well, customers came back to us in the beginning, you know, many years ago when we released this product and we didn't have this feature and said, well, what if my router locks up and I can't access my site because the router at the site is not working, so therefore, you know, all these nice bells and whistles and features you have, uh, you know, pointless, I still have to go out to the site. So we added that capability to basically poll any router or switch or anything that you choose. Uh, you can plug in the IP address of that device. And our, our products in that local area network will keep pinging that device and, um, and, and saying, are you there? Are you there? And if it doesn't get an answer, um, the router is likely locked up. And so we can actually toggle power to that one router device keeping everything else running and reboot the router, which I'm sure a lot of people have experienced that from just their home router of having to unplug it every now and then and replug it in. So, so we've taken that concept and, and that will reboot the router and bring communications back to the site. And sometimes unknowingly, I mean, the operator may not have haven't seen that happen in the background or maybe it happened in the morning and, and no one noticed that they'd lost comms to that site potentially and, and we can resolve that uh, remotely. Um, one other aspect to the dedicated DC power plant approach is, you know, the backup batteries are almost as critical as the power equipment as well, because they're providing that backup power when, when the AC power is lost. And sometimes you don't know the, the quality and, of, of the batteries and your battery's ability to hold the charge. Um, batteries can get installed in all kinds of environments and after a period of time, they can lose their effectiveness. Um, you see that happen with sort of consumer devices, such as your phone loses its ability to hold its charge after a period of time. So we have the ability to actually test those batteries preemptively. Um, and it can be done every week or every, every month or whatever you need to. And we'll actually purposely run your site from those batteries. And we, we measure how quickly your, your batteries are depleting. And based on the site current and what we know about your battery capacity, we can test it. And if it's discharging too quickly, we stop the test and we provide the power to the site and everything runs. So there's no, discon no um, you know, discontinuation of any power or loss of you know, site power. But we will send you a notification email to say, you've likely got a bad set of batteries at the site because when we did the battery test, they didn't work very well. 
And so you can preemptively send someone out there and say, all right, let's replace these batteries. Because the last thing customers want is when the AC power is lost and they are reliant on those batteries, they thought they had eight hours of backup time and within an hour, they're almost depleted already. So to be able to have a dedicated DC power plant with all that monitoring and control capabilities um, to do some of just these features that I mentioned um, is, is, is really critical when we start looking at broadband and what the expectations are from subscribers to broadband services these days versus maybe 10 or 15 years ago. Right. So a lot of these features that you're talking about uh, kind of play into what you know what an operator is really looking for in a in a device. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to launch a poll um, just to kind of ask the audience um, what their large uh, biggest concerns are. So basically, the the poll here is um, what are your biggest challenges when it comes to power at your tower site? And you can pick um, as many as you'd like. Um, I can actually read them here too, just so that everyone hears them. Um, you know, not knowing the state of my batteries and how much battery, uh, I have left. Um, we have, um, let me see here. Oops. One away. <laughs> not having visibility to, uh, utility power outages or other power conditions in my site, having to send someone to the site to cycle power to reboot a device, no control of a third party backup power source, such as generators if my AC UPS fails uh, or I lose sight to the power, just that single point of failure and all of which you just kind of mentioned there. Um, so I'll go ahead and stop this. And looks like we're getting a couple more answers. So I'll just let that go for another minute. Let's see here. So if you can see that there, looks like uh, the first one's a, a pretty good trend and, and there's pretty much a, a equal for the rest, I would say. So um, yeah, it's, it's interesting to see, you know, I've, all, the, all the points there are pretty much shared amongst all of our, our listeners. Yeah, it's, it's a fairly good spread there, actually. So it's yeah. kind of interesting to see. Yeah. All right, so um, I guess it's a good segue into um, sort of ICT and their offering and post-sale support. Um, so, you know, generally, um, how is ICT able to kind of support WISPs when they deploy their networks incorporating the ICT um, DC power plant equipment? Uh, yeah, I mean, Certainly what we have noticed in talking with a lot of our customers is, you know, those that are looking to make that change uh, from maybe what they've been using, perhaps they may be uh, majority of sites are AC powered, maybe utilizing an AC UPS and some of the results of that poll, you saw that I think it was 17%, you know, had mentioned that. So obviously there may be some users out there that are using that type of uh, network architecture. So when they're making that change from either an AC UPS type system, uh, or perhaps they're using this, you know, the power that's coming along with the, the, the actual RF device, and radio device, and, and utilizing it that way. Um, and they're switching over to DC. You know, there's a lot of unknowns there for some customers. Uh, this is not something that they've done before. Um, and so we can certainly understand the hesitancy because, you know, suddenly, you know, the deployment of towers and the way that happens and, and running power to all the devices is, is going to change. And it, and of course, when we start that dialogue with our customers, we're talking with uh, the, you know, the network designers that are, are looking to sort of harden their networks by using a dedicated DC power plant. And, and we sort of explain the benefits and features and um, the way we kind of go about it is we have them sort of send us a bill of materials and we look at what the power requirements are for the site. And, we, and like I said earlier, we come up with, the, here's the good solution, here's the better solution, here's the, the best solution. And, we rely on them to make the, the right choice for their business and for their site and for their budget and that type of thing. So, but when it gets, that decision is made, you know, that has to roll out from sort of an engineering decision uh, um, to operations. And, and those folks that are deploying those sites, 
including the installers, for example, you know, this may be a new sort of shift for them and they haven't done this type of thing before. So we can certainly understand there's some hesitancy there and uh, some learning that needs to happen with some of our customers that have never done this. So, you know, we're not just uh, the type of company that just wants to go out there and, and here's the product and it does all these wonderful things now. Good luck and, and on your way. So we really want to help customers through that installation process if need be. And we've done that for some of our customers that have requested it. Uh, we've gone to their site. We've provided uh, webinar training uh, either remotely or actually gone to the site. We've provided uh, detailed installation instructions, including wiring, wiring guides, what needs to connect to where, those types of things, or supported those accounts that are looking to sort of come up with documentation for their installers to actually start rolling out these tower sites and putting power in them. So we've provided, you know, diagrams and images and whatever's needed to do to create that documentation for installers. Um, and like I said, actually going down there and, and having sessions with the installers themselves um, and educating them about, you know, the way to connect everything together is something that we're more than willing and have done in the past as well. So it's, it's one of the advantages you will have with the ICT products is if you look at some of the sort of other products in this space that's providing sort of DC power plant, ours are relatively easy comparatively to what they do in terms of installation process. So there are products out there that will require you to remove the top cover and, and run the load wires through and connect to an internal bus bar on the device or take the top cover off to run your ethernet cable through there. So you can plug it into the RJ45, which is sort of embedded more deeply inside the product. And, and um, that just adds an extra level of complexity to this uh, that a lot of customers are, you, know, you know, don't have the experience or, or rightly don't want to invest the time to do that because you know, we want to, a lot, of, a lot of customers are rolling out tower sites pretty quickly these days, right? So, uh, that are getting funding, for example. So anything that we can do to shorten that uh, installation process saves them time, saves them money ultimately. So um, all our products are designed. So, you know, all the connections just happen on, on the back of the unit or the front of the unit if, uh, on some products. There's no need to remove covers and, and to get into the, the, the guts of the equipment to, to make connections to load devices or to communication cables and that type of thing. So we wanna make the products and design the products themselves to be as, as easy to both use and, and to install. Um, and you know, there's different customers that use our products. There's the ones that we talked to in the beginning that are more interested in the technical requirements and making sure we fulfill those. And then there's the people that actually have to use our equipment uh, on a day-to-day -day basis by logging in and and you know, making changes and setting different settings and and or using it on a network management software service like through SNMP. So we work very closely with them with any questions they they may have. We've done firmware modifications to meet specific needs in, in some cases uh, in terms of network deployments. So the, the post sale support is is important as the you know the front end side of things and making sure that the deployment is going well that we're providing that support to the, the, the daily users of the equipment. Um, and, you know, we've got feedback from the field that our, our user interface that communicates with our intelligent products is, is fairly intuitive. Um, and we use that when we're talking to customers and step them through that for five to 10 minutes to see how easy it is to use in, in most cases. And we receive pretty positive feedback on the, on the whole for that. And then the installation, for the, for the folks that are installing it. It's, it's critical that they can do it quickly and easily, and we can provide all the tools and training to them um, after the sale to, to, to support them in those efforts because we want the whole, the whole experience to be an enjoyable one for everyone that's involved with utilizing ICT, not just the engineers and network operators, but the installers as well. Um, and so having that post-sale support, willing to fly out to a site to provide training if needed for your, for your um for your installers is something that we're more than happy to do and, and, and facilitate, so. Right. And I also, um, I think it's worth noting that even on the pre-sale side, you have a feature on your website that allows people to do, uh, demo some of the features of, of, the, of, the, uh, of the equipment and, you know, in, in virtual uh, time. Can you touch on that a little bit and kind of explain why that's, that's been really helpful for for a lot of our reps and talking to the customers about, about the products. 
For sure. It's, that's a very good point. I mean, it's something our sales team uses as well. Um, you know, you can look at a data sheet and you can tell someone about some of the features and benefits of a particular product like I have in this presentation today. But um, when you actually log into a demo of the, the product itself and see what you're going to see when you actually have to use the equipment, um, that really gives you a, a real good understanding of the capabilities of it. And so on our homepage for our website at ict-power.com, we do have demos for all of our intelligent products. And I encourage any of you that may be considering ICT or um, are more curious about some of the features and, and functionality our products provide, if you go to that uh, homepage and click on the demo software, you're able to see what our customers see when they log into the device. And for example, you know, with our intelligent distribution panels, um, those ones, those products have been uh, very successful for us for, for a number of reasons is you can look at the DC distribution panel. What that does, it takes the power coming from the power supply or from the battery, and it distributes it to multiple outputs that would provide power to all the individual devices that are on your tower site. So you may have you know, five or six radios on your site, and you may have a router and a network switch. So you may have eight, 10, 12 devices that you need to provide power for. Our distribution panel gives you the ability to connect all of those devices to our panel. And the nice feature that we have is you can individually turn each of those outputs on and off without affecting any of the other outputs. So if you have a problem with those devices, you can actually go in there and switch that off. And when you log into that demo software, boom, that's the first thing you see on that page. You see all the devices, you see the 12 outputs, you can label the outputs so you know exactly what the device is that's connected to it. So you know that I, I want to turn off this device, you know what that device is, and there's just an on off button and you just click on it and, and our device has a relay built into it and open that relay and disconnect power to that device. So um, that's the power of that demonstration software is really useful for, for both, like you mentioned, your sales team when they're talking to customers as well as ICTs as well, to step the customer through that for five or 10 minutes to get a real good understanding of not only the capability of the product, but actually how kind of intuitive it is. Um, it's not overly complicated. Uh, it's not that complex. And I think our software folks have done a really good job of, of making it fairly easy to use. And that's a lot of good feedback we get from the field you know, just says that, that it's very easy to use out of the box. Right, no, that's great. Um, so I want to turn now to maybe fielding some questions that have come in um, since we've been chatting here. Um, the first one is, what is ICT's average mean time between failures and how does it compare to the typical uh, first party option? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, we get requests for that information on a fairly regular basis. And we do track it. Um, there's different ways to track MTBF, and that stands for mean time between failure, for those that don't know. So it basically tracks the time for any particular product or model and how, and based on data, you know, what is the mean time between a failure event occurring with that particular device. So um, it does depend on the product because each product is, is you know, its own individual product and there's different ways to actually, um, to actually record that. We do it based on field data. Um, so what we do is we look at how many units are installed in the field and when they were shipped out into the field. And so therefore how long they've been running in the field. And then we look at the units that are returned to us with a failure event. And we basically look at the total runtime and, and the time of uh, the number of returns and we calculate our MTBF based on that. So it does vary, um, you know, some are up well over a million hours, some are 800,000 hours, um, but they're generally in the high hundreds of thousands of hours or over a million hours for our MTBF. And it's not a calculated MTBF, it's actually based on feedback and failures that we may see in the field. Um, you know, as I mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, ICT has had a lot of experience in critical power infrastructure um, and, you know, in the beginning, in our early days, a lot of that was uh, the public safety segment of the Lamb over radio network. So please fire an ambulance. So when we're designing our products, it's, it's, it's critical to us from the very beginning of our design process to make sure that they're designed to, to meet those critical applications, you know, such as, you know, public safety applications. And as I mentioned, with the broadband expectations and network reliability requirements, um, 
the fixed wireless broadband expectations and reliability as well. So we also sell into the carrier space a little bit too. So some of those tier one carriers and um, work with our products and, and they are also very stringent when it comes to making sure that the MTBF is where it needs to be and they're not seeing product failings in the field. So if that person has a specific uh, model in mind that wants some feedback from, um, more than happy to send an email to sales at ictcorporate.com and uh, list the actual model number of the device they're wanting some further feedback on in terms of MTBF and we're happy to provide those numbers to anyone who asks. Great. So uh, another question here is, um, are these power plants standalone or can they accommodate the networking equipment in the same cabinet? Uh, an additional cabinet can incur uh, an additional monthly cost uh, for ground space at a tower site. And that's right. That's something that we're very cognizant of when we design the products is uh, keeping the footprint as small as we can possibly keep it. Um, so a lot of our power systems, a uh, good portion of them are one U, so they'll take up one rack unit. Uh, so 1.75 inches. Um, and our distribution panels are also one U. So yeah, we're very, very cognizant of that. So they are traditional uh, 19 inch rack mount products for the most part. And so they will go into a traditional equipment rack along with all the networking equipment. And uh, so we've, you know, we've got some pretty good examples and photos of some of our customers that have sent that to us. But uh, yeah, we try to keep the, the power density as small as, as tight as we can, because we realize that a lot of, a lot of these sites are co-located and rack space is, is key. So um, when we go into that design process, we, we try to get as much power out of the device uh, by taking up as little space as possible as we can. Um, but that also ensuring obviously the reliability of the product. So to answer the question, yeah, they are 19 inch rack mount. They will go into an equipment rack with a lot of the other networking gear. Um, and they basically just, and, and then the batteries can be at the base of that sort of equipment rack as well, providing power um, as backup power. So. So they're not standalone. We do have some desktop form factors, but traditionally for the DC power plant equipment, it is a 19 inch rack mount type uh, form factor. All right, um, investing in a dedicated DC power plant obviously has additional costs associated with it. Uh, what is the return on such an investment? Uh, yeah, there is obviously when you go with a dedicated DC power plant solution, there is an incremental cost there um, to get that equipment in place. Um, but the return on investment is, is, is very quick if you're uh, frequently visiting sites for any power related issues. So, you know, when we purposely, when we went into this space, when we designed these products, we wanted to have a price point that was going to work for customers. Um, you know, the, the capability of some of these products, you know, you could argue that maybe we could have a, a higher price, but it's very important that we go in a, a, a price that meets uh, the budget for our customers and, and the return on investment is going to be very quick. And um, we are able to, you know, get your return on investment, you know, within, if you can eliminate one or two site visits, um, you could basically, you know, pay for the equipment itself, depending on what your sort of labor rates are. So the, it's the total cost of ownership uh, side of it, really. So there may be a little bit more upfront cost when it comes to the capital uh, expenditure for our system. But again, like I said, we like to price at a, an affordable price. But operationally, over the period and lifespan of that product, if you can resolve an issue um, remotely without having to send a technician or someone out to that site uh, to drive two or four hours in their truck. Um, there's, there's cost savings in a couple areas. The, the tangible areas, I'm saving on operating expenses, uh, less maintenance costs. Um, and those, those are quite tangible and easy to calculate. And then there's the, the intangible costs that are associated with it. If your network is, is down um, because of power issues uh, or one of your devices locks up and you have to send someone out to that site, if that's affecting your subscribers um, and they're seeing sort of network outages and, and things like that as a result of that, um, then that's a sort of an intangible cost that maybe they may you know, opt to you know, move to another provider, for example. So if you're able to keep your network uptime and quality of service high, uh, by, our, by being able to monitor power conditions, respond to power issues, 
uh, remotely and more quickly, then there's some intangible cost savings there too, as you're able to sort of retain customer satisfaction and retention for your customers as well. So um, we would, you know, everyone's sort of cost uh, models are different, but if, if you save someone going out to a site a couple of times, you've pretty much paid for the equipment in most cases. Yep. So um, this one kind of touches on some of the points that you made earlier, but um, if I was to decide to go with the dedicated DC power plant approach, how does ICT differentiate itself from other vendors in the space? Uh, I think you touched on that a little bit, but it's definitely a point that's worth reiterating and making clear. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a couple areas and, I, and a lot of our existing customers, I think will agree with this. We do get really positive feedback in terms of our support. Um, you know, it's not real rocket science, but some companies are better than others at doing it is, you know, responding to customers quickly um, and, you know, not them sending a general email in and not hearing from, from us for three or four days. I mean, there's the culture within our company is that we, we really, if we treat our customers well, they'll treat us well. Um, so it's not just about the product capabilities. It's making sure that our customers are supported well, pre-sales, during the sale and, and, and after the sale. So, um, you know, we, we like to think that we do a pretty good job at that and we've received pretty good feedback. Um, and it does seem like a basic concept, but uh, if you can just respond to customers quickly, uh, you know, you will have a favorable uh, customer retention rate. But we also work with customers uh, for some unique applications. So some of our customers might come to us and say, oh, I love your products, but you know what? Um, it would really cool if you could do this, this or the other. And, you know, with a lot of our products being firmware based, you know, we are able to work with our engineering department and they are able to sort of modify firmware to, you know, set in to meet customer expectations. And the advantages with ICT over a lot of other companies is we design, build and manufacture all our products here in North America. So I'm based in, we're headquartered in just outside of Vancouver in British Columbia and Canada. All our engineering team is there, all our manufacturing team is there, all our production staff is there, our supply chain team is there, the sales marketing teams, they're all located in that same building. So, you know, when it comes to, you know, lead times, I know that's a sensitive subject these days. There's a lot of supply chain issues and things like that. We do have the ability to run downstairs and talk to our production team and see what we can do to, you know, maybe accelerate certain things that, when, um, you know, that are within our control. Um, and that's a nice advantage to have because we're not relying on someone overseas to produce the product for us and, and send it to us. So having that, you know, that resource available to us in our, in the same building has really provided a lot of advantages uh, to our customers in that sense. And then having the engineering team there as well, so we can respond really quickly to customers is really important. And we have no issues with customers talking with our engineers. Um, a lot of people keep their engineering team in a silo and, and don't want them sort of engaging with customers. If the person who designed that product can provide some value to a customer that has some questions or maybe wants to tweak a few things, then we are happy to facilitate those types of calls and, and, and make those types of things happen. So, so the, the support is, is key. Another area to answer that question, you know, as it compares to, you know, our competitors maybe is, um, you know, we know what we're doing. We've been in this space for a while, particularly as I mentioned earlier in the LAM over radio space. So we know what criticality uh, these networks are needed, you know, from, from the public safety networks, like I talked about for the, these broadband networks. So, um, so we're more than happy to guide you through that process and work with you to design your power plant for your network. Um, we realize that this is a new area for a lot of WISPs. Um, and so the expectation is not that they have to try and figure it out. We will come up, we will take a look at your bill of materials. We'll step you through that process. We'll ask you how much runtime you want on your batteries. We'll ask you how quickly you want your batteries to be recharged because that's important too. You may have, you may say, I want 24 hours of runtime, but you may want your, charge, your batteries to be recharged in four hours because your site loses power fairly frequently. Um, and so you, you want to be able to, when you have AC power available, you want to be able to recharge those batteries as quickly as possible because there's a, a chance you may lose AC power. So we ask those types of qualifying questions to design the best DC power plant for that particular application. And then, as I mentioned before, we come back with the good, better, best. So this will, all, all of these three options will do the job. 
but this one will offer you this capabilities and these benefits and features. This one won't. This one is more the entry level one, but it's more cost effective. And we rely on the WIS to make decision that makes sense for their business uh, and their, their tower site and their customers, whatever it may be. So um, secondly, I would say the big differentiator when it comes to ICT is the intelligent products. I mean, you know, part of this whole discussion has been the remote connectivity and monitoring and control of our products. We're the first ones to implement the control aspect into our products uh, way back in 2010 was the first intelligent products we came out with. And at that point in time, particularly in the land over radio space, no one was doing that. So um, it, it took off very quickly because people could see the benefit of not having to go to their site as, as often as they needed to. And, you know, our sales team has done a great job in when they're talking with WIST of explaining those benefits, of stepping through that demo uh, unit that uh, you talked about on the, uh, the homepage there and showing them how, how to control and monitor um, power conditions at their site and what benefits that can bring. So that's the real differentiator that we've had as a company is we're the first industry leading folks to sort of do that with our products. And fortunately for us and fortunately for our customers, um, it's, it's, really, uh, it's really taken off and customers have really gravitated towards that. And I will say that, you know, on nearly every single case where customers, mm -hmm. typically the way it will work is they'll maybe buy one or two as a proof of concept before taking the plunge and, and making this, you know, significant change to their network architecture when it comes to power. And they typically will buy one or two as a proof of concept and they put it in. And in those cases, you know, it, nearly every single time, if the budget allows and they come back and they go, okay, we're going to deploy this and put it through our whole network. They, they quickly see the benefits and the return on investment and the total cost of ownership of our product uh, being a huge benefit to their business, um, both from operationally, but also to their customer satisfaction rate and network reliability, those types of things. Um, so I, I would say that they're, they're the big sort of uh, differentiators we have uh, from some of our competitors in this space is the intelligent products, the support that we provide uh, pre-sale as well as post-sale, and just our familiarity with our, the markets that we serve. We, we like to be fairly educated in, in, in the markets and we, we maintain a very narrow focus. ICT is not one of these companies that is selling into all these different types of markets that need power. We're very focused on land mobile radio, on the radio access networks and the cellular phones and infrastructure and the fixed wireless broadband space um, because they're all very synergistic and, and parallel type uh, application uses. And that's where we focus on because that's what we do well. I think there is one more here that's come in uh, and we have a few minutes left. So uh, it says, what um, DC best practices do you see your customers failing to follow most frequently? That's a great question. Um, and it kind of goes into the support area as well. Uh, an area of confusion uh, that comes to DC is, uh, I would say, polarity is a big deal. A lot of the equipment that is used in a fixed wireless broadband installation is, uh, a lot of it will operate on 48 volts. Um, some of the equipment will require minus 48 volts. Some of the equipment less so, but some of it may require exclusively plus 48 volts. And some of the equipment that goes on the tower doesn't really care if it's plus or minus 48 volts. So there can be a lot of confusion and rightly so around the polarity and how I get around it. So if it's minus 48, do I just switch the wires over and cross them over and connect it? Well, generally not. <laughs> um, and so that's where we're able to provide guidance on that. And in fact, we were just at the Wisp America show and, and Cliff Mandela, business development manager, provided a technical uh, seminar on things like that, on polarity on plus minus 48 and, and things to consider when it comes to, to those types of things. So that is that has been a, a big element of some confusion and we can provide that support and, and guidance and even training to the installer team uh, to make sure that they're doing things the right way. Um, and we also have products that, are, that work well in a hybrid environment so you, you might be using minus 48 and plus 48 or you might be using minus 48 and plus 24 on the same tower site we have products that have isolated inputs and outputs that enables you to do that without any repercussions of mixing polarities and mixing different voltages and those types of things so 
Yeah, there's a lot of questions when it comes to DC as people move from a traditional AC uh, architecture into the DC architecture. But um, my answer just to the general audience would be, you know, just consult with an IT, ICT sales engineer and they'll help you out and provide guidance. And if further training is needed for the install team, if documentation is needed, if installation diagrams are required, we can work to get that type of thing for our customers to support them as well. All right. Well, um, I think that's pretty much all the topics that we had. Uh, I want to thank Blair Clements for joining us uh, on a great, great conversation, uh, very informative on, on the world of ICT. And um, I'll just remind all of our viewers that there is a brief survey at the end. If you can just um, finish that or complete that, please. And, and basically, it's just if you'd like more information, uh, about ICT, we'll be happy to reach out to you and, and get more information uh, in your hands. So uh, with that, we'll, we'll go ahead and end it and hope everyone has a wonderful day. Thanks, Joey. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Thanks, Blair. Bye-bye now.